The Pura Sangue, which is long and elegant, seems to be less of an SUV and more of a GT Tourer with an increased ride height. Marinello refers to it as Ferrari's utility vehicle, owing to its large bonnet and fanned greenhouse. In any case, it does not conform to the standard SUV silhouette. In today's video, we will be discussing the Ferrari SUV, the Ferrari Pura Sangue. Kindly stay tuned to the end of this video to know more about this new amazing car. Pura Sangue will continue to be powered by hybridized gasoline, but the associated projects codenamed F244 and F245 will bring in the age of pure electrification at Ferrari. The SUV's hardware is electric ready and the flat skateboard floor implies that the five-seater Ferraris are now a possibility. This exciting plug-in Ferrari may have what it takes to qualify as an access all areas showpiece for the environment conscious jet set, capable of packing up to four e-motors with an initial output of 610 brake horsepower, as well as a scalable fast charging lithium ion battery pack good for a base capacity of 80 kilowatts an hour. Puro Sangue is Ferrari's first attempt into the ultra high performance SUV sector. The four door is even sportier than the Urus, Bentega, DPX and Cullinan with a focus on dynamics rather than rock climbing. The groundbreaking newcomer combines crossover benefits such as slightly higher seating position, lots of cabin and trunk space, and a more robust external appearance with sports car attributes such as nibble handling, exciting road holding, and excellent performance. I despise hearing the phrase SUV in the same sentence as Ferrari, remarked the then new but now departed Ferrari chief Louis Camilleri in an interview with Car Magazine in 2018. It is incompatible with our brand. This vehicle will be a one of a kind in so many ways and it will defy expectations. This is why executives like to refer to it as an FUV, which stands for Ferrari Utility Vehicle. That kind of confidence is designed to foster easy success. However, confidence has been in short supply at Marinello in recent years, as its Formula One team continues to waste the quickest vehicle on the field and the renowned car manufacturer suffers from the unexpected departure of CEO and chairman Sergio Marchione. The fundamental goal of Ferrari's Capital Markets Day in 2019 was to restore investor trust. Share prices for Ferrari and FCA fell in the aftermath of Marcione's death in July 2018, exacerbated by Camilleri's statements that the strategy he inherited is both aspirational and faced with risks. How can you instill trust in a 70-year-old manufacturer of famous road and racing cars? With the introduction of an SUV, too controversial and too fast. Camilleri requested breathing time to achieve our objectives for what will be an exceptional vehicle. While investors are eager, encouraged by the success of similar goods from Lamborghini and Bentley, Ferrari devotees are waiting for the SUV's arrival with trepidation, much like a patient waiting for the dentist's drill. Camilleri did affirm, however, that the revolutionary hybrid FUV is under development with its expenditures but not revenues included in the new period plan. Now, in 2022, a staggering 60% of Ferrari's vehicles will be hybrid, according to technology chief Michael Hugo Leaders, who describes hybridization as a zero-lag facilitator of, rather than substitution for, turbocharging. A fully electric Ferrari is not yet in the works. At the 2018 Detroit Auto Show, late Ferrari CEO Sergio Marchione revealed that the new Pearl Sangue will be the quickest SUV on the market, which means it'll have to outperform the Urus physics bending capabilities. The Lamborghini SUV has a peak speed of 189 miles per hour, so the next Ferrari will have to be lightning fast. Despite years of denial, Car Magazine revealed in early 2017 that an SUV is presently an active project at Marinello. It's known as the F175, and it'll be manufactured alongside the next generation GTC4 shooting brake range. Performance, engine, and transmission. 
We don't know what's beneath the hood, but the Parosangue might have a turbocharged V8 or a massive V12 engine like Ferrari's renowned supercars. All-wheel drive is a certainty, and we wouldn't be shocked to see electrification in the form of a hybrid system as well. In 2014, Ferrari's LaFerrari hypercar had a 950 horsepower V12 hybrid engine. One thing is certain, it will be potent. The Piro Sangue will compete against the 626 horsepower Bentley Bentayga, the 641 horsepower Lamborghini Urus, and the Aston Martin DBX, which is powered by a 542 horsepower V8 engine provided by Mercedes AMG. Real world MPG and fuel economy. Even if the Piro Sangue receives a hybrid engine, we don't anticipate it to be a fuel-efficient leader. Because of Ferrari's emphasis on performance, whatever advances the engine can scrape out with the aid of electric motors will add to the acceleration rather than fuel efficiency. If the Piro Sangue is available with non-hybrid engines, you can kiss your gas money goodbye. In comparison, the Urus and the 12-cylinder Bentayga both get 12 MPG City, 17 MPG Highway, and 14 MPG combined. We anticipate something similar from the Pero Sangue. Cargo, interior, and comfort. We don't know what the inside of the Piro Sangue will look like since no concept photographs have been posted, but we'd anticipate a driver-focused layout with a capacity for four people in a decent-sized cargo area. Beautiful leather and genuine carbon fiber trim will almost certainly grace every inch of the Ferrari SUV's opulent interior. More details will undoubtedly emerge in the months leading up to the Piro Sangue's introduction in 2022 connectivity, and infotainment. The Roma and the F8 Tributo, two recent additions to the Ferrari portfolio, have taken different approach to in-car multimedia. The Tributo handles all such functions and features through a digital display in the gauge cluster, with an optional 7.0 inch display for the passenger. But the Roma has a more typical infotainment screen set vertically in the middle of the dashboard. We can't predict which route the Prio Sangue will go, but it will undoubtedly provide navigation standards. Driver assistance and safety features. The Piro Sangue has not only not been crash tested by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration or the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, but is also unlikely to be tested in the future. Neither of these organizations is interested in testing high-priced niche automobiles. The key safety features are anticipated to include available automatic emergency braking with pedestrian recognition and available lane departure warning with lane keeping assist. Warranty and Maintenance Protection While Ferrari's warranty isn't as extensive as Bentley's or Aston Martin's, which both give unlimited miles, Puro Sangue customers will discover that maintenance is covered for an extraordinary seven years. The limited warranty covers three years or 36,000 miles. The powertrain warranty is valid for three years or 36,000 miles. And complimentary maintenance is provided for seven years or an unlimited number of kilometers. Just how much does this incredible vehicle cost? What is the price of the Ferrari crossover? According to our sources, it is worth more than 300,000 euros. It's all excellent business. The addition of a harder, rougher Ferrari might help quadruple the prancing horse's sales to roughly 16,000 per year by the middle of this decade. That explains why almost every luxury manufacturer has decided to create an SUV. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, like, and leave a comment saying I subscribe, and I'll personally reply to your comment. Thanks.